A mysterious gas starts infecting people, turning their worst nightmares into fuel for rage. One family gets caught in this chaos as the regrets of their past continue to destroy their lives. Giacomo enjoys some private time in bed while watching a model from his phone. His father barges in, making him turn away to hide his excitement. Already aware of what he was doing, the older man tells him they have a job to do before leaving. As he prepares, his father constantly sends messages on his phone, urging him to hurry. This clearly frustrates Giacomo. Adding to his frustrations is when he has to pry open a manhole cover under the heavy rain. His father merely watches as Giacomo slips and falls before getting the job done. Still, Giacomo heads into the sewer alone where he spots something slimy on the floor. The sewage water suddenly boils, releasing gas that chokes him. As he struggles, a woman who looks like the model he was watching approaches him. Concerned and impatient, his father calls out to Giacomo, mocking him for taking too long. However, his son ignores this as the mysterious woman kisses him and whispers to his ear. Soon, his father lays dead as Giacomo shivers in the rain, covered in black sludge. Elsewhere, Thomas drives a mother and daughter to the hotel, keeping to himself as the girl complains about how slow he was. The next morning, Thomas watches his paraplegic daughter Barbara exercise her legs until she gives up. After that, she shares breakfast with her brother Enrico while Thomas learns about the incident with Giacomo from the newspaper. Their breakfast is interrupted when they hear a fight ensuing from their neighbor's place. Ignoring this, Thomas hears his alarm, notifying him that he has to take Barbara to school. He asks his son where he'll be for the day, but the man just leaves. On their way to school, they witness a teenager trying to kick a homeless old man off the area. Another woman, Alice, defends the old man and Barbara cusses at the teen to also defend and the vagrant. Infuriated, the teen marches to the girl, but Thomas tells him to back off. As Thomas and Barbara near the school grounds, he reminds her that they have physical therapy later. Her friend then takes Barbara to class, leaving Thomas with her mother who shows him the property they bought. Seeing him impressed, she invites him for dinner. Meanwhile, Enrico tries to shoplift a bottle of liquor from a store, but an old woman tells him to put it back. Frustrated, he purchases it properly while mumbling to himself. At the counter, he sees his father on the other side with another woman, so he tries to hide from him. Still, Thomas notices him, though he doesn't go over to check on him. Thomas visits Farini, whom he works for as a caregiver. The bedridden man tells him he's glad he visited, but his roommate complains about how whiny the patient is when Thomas isn't around. After his roommate leaves, Farini notices his caregiver looking worried. Thomas just mentions that he has a lot to worry about. Farini comments that he still has his health, job, and kids, so he should be grateful, even if the past seems better now. Just then, Thomas's alarm blares, prompting him to leave. While outside his patient's room, Thomas bangs his head on the door in frustration over the next meager jobs he has to do to survive. He then proceeds to do house chores, struggling to get things done to keep his family afloat. During this, his son sits alone when a basketball hits his head. A group of men ask him to pass the ball back but he instead kicks it away and starts recording them. This riles them up, so they chase him. Enrico hides in a store then steals a mannequin and sets it up with firecrackers in an abandoned swimming pool. He records the explosion on his phone and sends it to a chat group. He admires his work and the comments on it, but pauses when he sees his late mother on his phone wallpaper. A security guard finds him and asks him to leave, but the troubled man belittles him instead. Seeing the guard feel sullen, Enrico leaves satisfied. The man then spends time with Martha, an older woman for hire. After their tryst, she checks on him, so he shows the videos of the angry group that chased him. The motherly woman asks what his father thinks of this, but Enrico replies that someone who broke a family has no right to tell him what to do. Right now, he only cares about his sister. He then tries to flirt with Martha, but she commands him to take a bath. Elsewhere, Thomas naps on a sofa while the news covers a violent murder. His alarm wakes him up but puts it on snooze. However, the yelling and fighting from the neighbor's house keeps him awake, so he decides to intervene. He knocks on their door and asks about the noise. The neighbor apologetically explains that his wife has violent depression, but Thomas spots the wound on his head and barges in to check things out. To his horror, he sees the neighbor's wife stabbing the floor with ooze dripping from her face. Thomas recoils in shock, so his neighbor ushers him out. Meanwhile, Enrico prepares to shower in Martha's home when he notices gas coming out from the sink. Curious, he smells it but coughs afterwards. Later, Thomas watches his daughter's physical therapy, though he shares to the doctor his worries that Barbara is giving up on healing her legs. The doctor assures him that it's normal for kids to seem that way, though she admits that there's no progress so far. 
The woman then complains that this wouldn't have happened if someone didn't drive with a headache. This surprises Thomas, so he asks her to confirm what he said. Instead, the doctor waves it off and urges him to stay strong for Barbara too. Enrico soon goes to their old home and lays down in his parents' room. He tears up, missing his mother when a bloody hand suddenly grabs him. He bolts up but only finds a model hand on the bed. During dinner, Thomas gets pissed at Enrico constantly tapping on his bowl. He yells that if he doesn't like their food, he should cook next time. However, his son just sarcastically praises the food and throws it aside before leaving. While she takes a bath later, Barbara asks her father if he loves her brother. Given that they always fight, Thomas says he does but adds that his son doesn't know when to stop causing trouble. Unbeknownst to them, Enrico's listening by the door, so he barges in to complain about his father's words. Thomas takes him outside to keep him from scaring his sister, but Enrico demands that he ought to guide him instead of scowling at him all day. However, Thomas just tells him to go to his room. The son admonishes how he's always blamed for everything, even for his father's failures. With that, Enrico blames Thomas for his mother's passing before storming off. Despite this, Thomas goes through the night and tucks his daughter to bed, though he notices a drawing of the family on a foggy window with the sun crossed out. Thomas then checks up on Farini and picks up his salary. Gallery. However, he points out that he gave him too much, but his patient tells him to swallow his pride and take it. Unbeknownst to him, Enrico goes to Martha seeking comfort. However, she rejects him since she has another client. She gently tells him that she's not what he needs before shutting the door on him. Heartbroken, the man weeps and curls up on the floor. On the same night, Thomas proceeds with his job as a driver when a car speeds in front of him, causing him to hit the brakes hard. He pauses in horror as he sees the sticker drawing of a family on the car, similar to the one he saw on his daughter's window. After dropping off his passenger, Thomas checks an old family photo on his phone and confirms that their car had the same sticker. Later, his supervisor tells him he's suspended due to his passenger complaining about the incident. He defends that he avoided another car but his superior tells him there's no reported plate number or witnesses to corroborate this. Thomas pleads with his superior, saying he has two kids to care for, but the man doesn't budge. With that, the father throws a fit. Mourning over losing one of his jobs, Thomas watches his daughter sleep until his alarm wakes her up. She greets him happily, saying she had a good dream, but her father places her on the wheelchair and coldly pushes her to the exercise bars despite her wishing to have breakfast first. The moment she pulls herself up, Thomas takes the wheelchair away. She struggles to stay up, and begs for the chair, but instead, her father spitefully accuses her of getting too comfortable with her condition. He continues muttering how her condition drives him mad enough to kill someone, but he snaps out of it when Barbara falls. Guilty, he takes her into his arms, tearfully apologizing. Barbara forgives him, but requests to have breakfast and make amends with Enrico. Over breakfast, Enrico cheerfully talks with his sister, but hearing him this way distracts Thomas enough that he spills milk. He resentfully offers the mug to Enrico, who rejects it at first, but Barbara urges him to take it. She then requests that Enrico joins them on their way to school. Humoring the kid, Thomas drives Enrico to school along with Barbara. During this, the news on the radio announces more gruesome murders happening all over the city. This upsets Barbara, so she asks Thomas to turn it off. However, the man's mind wanders off upon hearing the news, prompting Enrico to switch the radio off instead. Finally, their father snaps out of it and continues driving. Despite his sister insisting on taking him to school, Enrico decides to skip classes. On his way, he bumps into his friend Jeanlu. The man is glad to see him back, but the troubled man says he's leaving since he was only there to make his sister happy. Disappointed, Jeanlu walks off, but Enrico offers to skip class with him. The two spend the day goofing off and even break into the abandoned swimming pool. There, Jeanlu asks if he blew up the mannequin for attention but Enrico says he doesn't actually know. When his friend asks about his family, Enrico dodges the topic and just asks him to record a video. The troubled man devours a bag of chips and then throws up in the pool, shocking his friend. Enrico then urges him to do the same, but he refuses. This starts a fight between the two, with John Lu lamenting on what Enrico has turned into. Still, he offers to talk about his friend's troubles, but Enrico remains quiet about it. Meanwhile, Thomas goes to the store near where his accident happened, hoping to see footage of his drive yesterday. To his confusion, he finds that there was no car that sped through in front of him. The man assisting him comments that he's not surprised about this, given the rumors about a gas emanating from sewers during the rain, allegedly causing hallucinations. Because of this, Thomas researches the rumored gas while accompanying his daughter in her physical therapy. He finds one man's post on social media, so he sends him a message, hoping to talk about the events. On their drive home, they discover that the homeless man near their building is dead. 
As Thomas checks what happened, Alice mutters that only an animal could have harmed him so cruelly. When the two arrive home, Barbara screams upon seeing gas coming out of the tub and the sinks. Thomas covers them and rushes to Farini, only to find the bed empty and filled with black sludge. Suddenly, Farini's roommate emerges, covered in sludge. He mutters how Farini's last words were Thomas's name before sitting on the patient's bed. Horrified, Thomas scrambles away. In the abandoned pool, Enrico and John Lu hide as they plot to steal the security guard's gun. However, John Lu negotiates to steal his radio instead. With this, Enrico approaches the guy to distract him, but when the guard turns, he is horrified to find him covered in sludge. The guard then holds the intruder at gunpoint, making Enrico freeze. Just then, an unaware John Lu runs behind the guard to steal his radio, but ends up getting shot. The guard shoots him again, finishing John Lu off. Terrified, Enrico pleads as the guard aims his weapon at him. Instead, however, the man shoots himself. The horrified man mourns over his friend before calling his father for help. Despite his desperate pleas, however, he hears his father telling him that he doesn't care about him. In reality, Thomas is holed up in the bathroom with his phone far from him. Feeling abandoned, Enrico gazes at the guard's gun thoughtfully just as the rain starts. At home, Thomas closes a window when he spots a woman peering at him from the opposite building. A hand appears and bangs the woman's head against their window, and the breaking glass triggers a deafening car alarm from below. This causes Thomas to twist in agony until the sound stops. He peers through the window again, only to find the curtains on the opposite building closed. His phone then dings, leading to Thomas to finally discover that he missed his son's calls. Ultimately, Enrico sends him a message, declaring his freedom. Before he can process this message, someone knocks on the door. Scared, Thomas grabs a screwdriver before checking, only to find that no Nobody was outside. Instead, he finds writing on the walls. Just then, he hears someone enter his home, and when Thomas checks, he finds a trail of black sludge leading inside. He follows it to a room and freezes upon seeing what's inside. Elsewhere, Enrico goes to Martha's place and follows a woman's voice calling to him, unaware that his lady companion has drowned in the bathroom. When the man enters the bedroom, he sees his deceased mother Christina on the bed, asking him to join her. The same apparition appears for Thomas, who shivers in Christina's arms. Arms. Each of their hallucinations whispers sweet things to them, but afterwards, the woman calls them failures. She tells Enrico that he's a failure because his father abandoned him. Meanwhile, the apparition tells Thomas that his son broke their family. The apparition then urges them on what to do to set themselves free. With this, Enrico holds his gun and Thomas grips his screwdriver, with both having black liquid flows from their eyes. As this happens, their hallucinations smile at them maniacally. Years back, Thomas was busy at work when his phone alarmed, prompting him to get his pastries from the oven. He served it to Enrico and John Lu before joining them to play their video game. A tired Christina arrived home, so Thomas comforted her. She told him that her mother was looking for a chef for her restaurant, so she recommended him. However, Thomas pointed out that he already had a job. Her phone chimed as it was time to pick Barbara up from her classmate's party. She complained that she had a headache, hoping that her husband could take over. However, Thomas reasoned that he had a deadline to finish, so Christina agreed to do it. Upon hearing this, Enrico insisted on going with her. While their son prepared to leave, the mother noticed her husband looking stressed, so she held his hand in comfort. On their way to the party, Christina struggled due to her headache, so Enrico offered to take over. Persistent, the mother refused, though she commented that her son was like his father who liked to take charge. Soon they picked up Barbara who insisted on taking some balloons home. During the drive, Enrico started smoking out of boredom and decided to pop one of the balloons to scare his sleeping sister. The pop startled everyone and made Christina swerve, crashing into another car. After the crash, rain started pouring, washing Christina's blood into the drainage. From there, the black sludge bursted out. In the present, Enrico heads to the apartment and walks into a hallway filled with balloons, filling his mind with his guilt. Suddenly, his father stabs him from behind and runs. He wails and pulls the screwdriver off. Afterward, Enrico charges into their apartment with his gun. Thomas deflects the weapon and tackles his son to the floor, holding him down as the hallucination whispers to punish his son. Hearing the commotion, Barbara wheels herself to her bedroom door but finds it locked. With no choice, she slams on the door, shouting for them. During the struggle, Thomas breaks his son's hand and takes the gun. 
He aims it at Enrico's head, but his phone chimes, distracting him long enough for his son to escape into the elevator. Meanwhile, someone opens Barbara's door and she wheels herself out. The teen who attacked the homeless man days before appears, threatening her. Luckily, Alice appears and ends him, allowing Barbara to escape into the elevator. At the parking lot, Enrico hides from his father, only for Thomas to yank him from behind. The man holds him at gunpoint, but Barbara cries for them to stop. The men are stunned to see her standing in her attempt to save them, but she falls back down. Still, she crawls towards them, cursing at them for ruining their family. Guilty, the men hold Barbara's hands to apologize just as a disfigured, sludge-ridden form of Christina drags itself towards them. Instead of being afraid, Thomas reaches out to her, but the figure melts, unable to take hold of their minds anymore. The father and son then gaze at each other when tears flow from their eyes, washing off the darkness that infected them. Soon, the family walks out of the apartment. Amidst the chaos that ravaged their city, the trio embrace one another, treasuring what they still have instead of fixating on the days they lost. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.